is Joy News Prime. This is indeed Joy News Prime, and my name is Israel Lai. Coming up, President Mahama insists government will not yield to demands by striking doctors and other agitating labor groups despite the political ramifications. Meanwhile, the Ghana Medical Association says it will move on to the next phase of its industrial action, which will see its members withdraw emergency services at public health facilities. The Trade Union Congress, in a related development, wants government to investigate and punish those who lead the proposals for the conditions of service of the striking doctors. We have all that and more in the 60-minute package of the bulletin, also available on ABN television. Now also free view in the UK station. Now, very first story. President Mahama has reiterated government will not yield to agitations by workers for wage increases, regardless of the political ramifications of such a decision, especially in the run-up to the 2016 election. According to him, the demands made by the Ghana Medical Association will adversely affect the single spine pay policy and that he will not authorize any expenditure not provided for in the budget. The remarks by the president at the opening of a conference by the Ghana Registered Midwives Association's 80th anniversary is targeted mainly at doctors working at public hospitals who have put forward some perks. They say they want to see captured in the conditions of service currently being negotiated with government. There are linkages and relativities between all public sector groups. Just yesterday, a friend was urging me to intervene and accede to the demand of the doctors. After all, there are only 2,800 of them, he told me. What he fails to realize is that there are 598,000 other public sector workers organized in 11 other professional groups lined up and just waiting to see what the doctors come away with from the negotiating table before they put in their own demands. Ladies and gentlemen, this will adversely affect the single spine pay policy and could result in breaking the spine. A lot of effort has gone into implementing this new universal public service salary structure and nothing should be done to derail it. Ironically, I will say that if this spinal cord should break, it must not be at the hands of a group whose principal calling is rather to heal. The right to negotiate by professional groups is sacrosanct, and I believe that government and the medical officers must continue the dialogue on conditions of service to arrive at an amicable resolution in an atmosphere that is devoid of coercion. Currently, other negotiations are ongoing on other categories of allowances at the Public Services Joint Negotiating Committee. Any agreements that are reached in respect of allowances or conditions of services would have to be appropriately captured in the budget. And I want to say for emphasis that I will not authorize any expenditure on wages and compensation not provided for in the budget. Fiscal discipline requires that not a single PESWA is spent on remuneration outside what has been budgeted for. And this goes for both Article 71 office holders and those on the single spine. It goes for the president as well as the lowest public sector employee. I'm determined to hold the line no matter the political cost. The 80th anniversary of the Midwifery Association in Ghana brought together practitioners to strategize on how best to improve their services with an ultimate goal of reducing maternal and infant mortality. President Mahama also announced plans to establish more midwifery training schools in the country to increase the number of practitioners in the field. Commencement of a new initiative to train midwives to perform basic ultrasound for pregnant women. Over 500 general electric portable scan machines are being procured for nationwide training of midwives in ultrasound scanning. 
Over 600 midwives across the country working in CHIPS compounds and health centers will be trained by the end of the first quarter of 2016. After training, they'll be provided with these ultrasound equipment to improve quality of care by early identification of complicated deliveries. Let me take this opportunity to reiterate the commitment of government to the attainment of MDGs 4 and 5. I'm aware that with regards to the availability of midwives to meet the human resource requirements for the attainment of these MDGs since the year 2009, the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Ghana has licensed a total of 5,746 mid midwives who have been posted to all nooks and crannies of Ghana and are serving Mother Ghana diligently. Now, President of the Ghana Registered Midwives Association, Joyce Jinja, wants the Labour Commission to grant them a bargaining certificate to enable them to negotiate for better working conditions. In Ghana, midwives are vitally important to women's health, not only because they deliver women of their babies, but as a skilled professionals, they are educated, and I stress on education, to take care for women of all ages and the newborn, including promotion of health and management of minor ailments of the entire family. The most hard to reach health centers in this country are headed by midwives without incentives, yet these four ladies are giving out their best to save lives. Currently, more than 70% of midwives are within the age of bracket 45 to 60 years, with just about 27% below 45 years. Annually, about 60% health workers health professionals go on retirement, of which 90% of these are midwives. This one to your excellency. The midwifery profession has experienced a prolonged birth. Midwives have always been seen as an extension of nursing and treated like a boil under the armpit of nursing. Midwifery used to be a post-basic training of, to nursing until recently, so most nurses above some age brackets are midwives as well. The midwifery profession is now recognized as autonomous profession in Ghana, and we applaud the recognition. However, 80 years as a professional association, and midwifery is still absurd in some circles within the health sector. Now, the Ghana Medical Association says it will go ahead with the next phase of its industrial action, which it says will culminate in the mass resignation of its members working as doctors in the country's public health facilities. This, the GMA says, will see a withdrawal of emergency services on Friday, a week after suspending outpatient services. The association has meanwhile dissociated itself from a supposed letter stating the doctor's demand and criticized government for not showing commitment to reaching an amicable settlement with the GMA. Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association will not comment on President's refusal to yield to the doctor's demand. I respect myself as a person. I wouldn't want to go into a media banter with the President. I, as an employee, no law compels me to work for any employer. So if I think that the conditions under which I'm working is not the best for me, I am ready to quit and go do anything, including petty trading, because I believe that there is more dignity doing something that at least I have my peace of mind. They can go and do their political propaganda as they are doing. We are professionals. They don't go into the theaters with us. They don't go into the consulting rooms with us. They don't go into the OPDs or the emergency rooms with us. We have put what we think is fair to ask from the employer to the employer. It is up to the employer to decide whether to sit down with us and ensure that we come to some compromise positions on things or he leaves it as it is and we also think about ourselves. Dr. Yangson meanwhile said government was yet to invite them for a resumption of negotiations after the talks broke down last week. Well, officially we haven't had any negotiations. We've had some other informal talks or talks that I would say and not daily negotiations, but in a way could have a bearing on the negotiations. That has happened, but 
In terms of true negotiations, we are yet to have one. Reacting to the supposed letter from the GMA stating the doctor's demand, Dr. Yangson challenge claims what the doctors are asking for are unrealistic. We want to put on record that we, dis we dissociate ourselves from that so-called leak document simply because we signed on to a document not to do that and we haven't done that. So are you saying that the content of that leak document doesn't reflect... I said I will not Some give credence to anything. That is why I put in the caveat that assuming without admitting that that was even the content, what is wrong with it? Go out there into the no, please. It is not. It is not. Please. It is not some who are saying. Go out there to the public institutions and find out what other officers are getting. Assuming we even ask for hundred gallons of fuel at the initial stage, as in the proposal, subject to whatever will be determined finally. What is wrong with it? We know the backgrounds of some ministers. Some were our juniors in school. Go and see the conditions under which people are enjoying whatever they are doing for the state. Go and see how much fuel is giving them. And publish that bit as well. Why didn't the government side also publish the so-called ridiculous positions they presented in the beginning? The GME, according to its roadmap, is seeking to have all its members resign their positions at public health facilities by August 14, unless an agreement is reached. Matilda from Agan. For Joy News, Accra. In a related development, residents, medical officers and house officers of the Kolobu Teaching Hospital have declared their unwavering support for the Ghana Medical Association's General Assembly's quest to get its members conditions of service. In a letter to the chief executive of the hospital, the medical officers indicated they associate themselves with a the strike and have unanimously resolved to ensure its continuous implementation until the GMA has signed the conditions of service for its members. The group also adds withdrawal of some health services was not intended to bring hardship to patients and their relatives. The health workers are also encouraging government to expedite negotiations to allow for a quick resolution of the problem. And then staying on the labor front, the Trade Union Congress is charging government to investigate and punish those behind the leakage of alleged proposals submitted by striking medical doctors to government. The statement signed by Secretary General Kofi Asama says a leakage could undermine negotiations and undermine the credibility of the government. It is meanwhile calling on the striking doctors and pharmacists to return to negotiations. Meanwhile, Vice President of Civil Society Group, Imani Ghana, says the current impasse between government and doctors requires a middle ground approach. Speaking on today's big story, Kofi Bento said, if government can't meet the fair demand of the doctors, it must accept their re resignations and renegotiate new conditions which will require them to be paid hourly. This, he said, will be the beginning of a devolution process to relieve government of the burden of employing doctors. We need to appreciate that what the doctors are asking for is not unreasonable. Okay. But what the president is saying is also true. Now, you get to a situation where you have two conflicting things, and we must find it within ourselves to mm. accommodate that ambivalence, mm. at least philosophically. That's right. And when we accommodate that, figure out how to work our way out of it. So the point I'm making is that both of them are right. Now, how do we deal with this? We should first appreciate that Going about this, I think it's a win or lose arrangement. It's going to just ratchet up, you know, the emotion, and we won't get anywhere. Mm. What we should appreciate is this whole paradigm of government employing doctors and paying them from a central position is not sustainable. sustainable. Mm. Okay, the future will not allow us to have that, and that is not just for doctors. We have the same thing in universities. We have the same thing in other places, in polytechnics, and you know, many other places where the government. Is the employer, and that is what we have said over and over again. Which is also why I am not surprised at what is going on. That mm. we need to respect the relationship between doctors, lecturers, and government as employer-employee. Well, John News has learned, barring any last-minute intervention, members of the University Teachers Association of Ghana will also declare strike tomorrow, Thursday, August six. The university teachers are striking over government's refusal to pay their book and research allowances. The teachers say government has reneged on its promise to pay the allowances in spite of numerous assurances.
Another news, a research fellow at the Institute of Economic Affairs says the 40-year development plan being developed by the National Development Planning Commission is long overdue since policy discontinuity has over the years stifled the country's development. Dr. Ransford Jampo, however, wants the president to take advantage of the constitutional review process to give the plan legal backing and make a compulsory for successive governments. Dr. Jampo says the policy would be meaningless if it is not binding. Stakeholders in development have over the years pushed for a policy that will bind all political parties that come to government to implement a national agenda in areas of development. This concern was also expressly exhibited when two former presidents, Jerry John Rawlins and John Ajekum Kufo, flanked President Mahama at the launch of the plan. A research fellow at the Institute of Economic Affairs, Dr. Ransford Jampo says the Institute is content its proposal has received attention from government. Dr. Jampo, however, wants governments to give the policy a legal backing to bind successive governments. If we want to implement the proposal, then we should implement it to the full. Um, let's go back to um, it, take it, a look at it again, and you would see that we made a recommendation that the proposal must bind successive regimes um, because we live in a country plagued with the tragedy of policy discontinuity. Um, we initiate a policy, a plan, and you get out of power and then a new regime comes only to jettison the one that was initiated. I think it doesn't help us. It means we are always starting things anew, but there should be some form of continuity. You cannot have development without, without some element of policy continuity. And so um, let us go back to the IE proposal, um, look at it in its entirety, and take advantage. We urge you call on government, we encourage the government to take advantage of the ongoing constitution review process to see whether there can be some provision that makes the plan binding on successive regime. The National Development Plan policy is intended to give a framework and direction for Ghana in terms of development. We're taking a break, break on joining News Prime. We'll be back with more stories on Goway. The Minister of Defence has been explaining what goes into the payment of gratuity for ex-servicemen of the Ghana Armed Forces. Dr. Benjamin Kumbo says that calculations differ from one, one officer to the other due to the factors considered, including years of service and ranks. It follows agitations in the last few days by some aggrieved ex-military personnel about the non-payment of their pensions. He was speaking at the media press series in Accra. When you are supposed to be paid your grade duty, there are a number of conditions. Your trade, your time of intake, your rank, all those things are taken into consideration that are in the armed forces regulation. So it is not possible to have two soldiers that who will take home the same amount of money as gratuity. There are other things, and for the dignity of the Ghana armed forces, we could have put them out in the media, but we chose not to do it. If you are a soldier and you go and take a loan from the bank, and your platoon commander or any other commander guarantees the loan for you, and you are leaving the Ghana Armed Forces, why do you think that loan should not be recovered? So you can enter the army the same hour with somebody, retire at the same rank, but depending on how you handle your finances while you were there, you will not take home the same amount. There is a particular soldier that indicated in the media that he was paid only 301 Ghana cities on retirement. We specifically asked for his form, his file. We went through the file and saw that this soldier had gone home with 59,715. You see, our profession, our members of the military, also enjoins us as part of the discipline not to go to the media. It is not for want of correcting the error, but it is part of the discipline of the Ghana Armed Forces. And I'll tell you that our doors are opened. It might be convenient for the media to publish what they see firsthand. But I want to tell you that it is not always what you see that is what you get. 
Thanks to an extensive demolition exercise embarked on by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Accra's largest slum, Old Fodama, has been significantly reduced to just about a third the original size. The exercise faced massive opposition from both the slum dwellers and some political bigwigs who felt it could cost the ruling National Democratic Congress. But in the end, the AMA stood its ground and prevailed. It however appears most of the affected slum dwellers are unwilling to let go of their claim to the land. Joy News' Ridwan Karim Dini Osman, who visited the area, reports many still have our intentions of rebuilding from the ruins. <laughs> They were rendered homeless in the demolition exercise city authorities say should significantly address the perennial flooding which this year claimed more than 150 lives. The result, hundreds of displaced people, some of whom have since made their way back to their home regions. It wasn't however without a fight as hundreds marched on parliament vowing to stay no matter what. It's been nearly seven weeks since the exercise began and there are still many Many displaced residents who are standing their ground, insisting they have nowhere to go. We are still here because we have nowhere to go. We don't even have money to rent an accommodation. Most of those who go is there are few. Those who are there, who are here now, they are more than those who go. Well, the, the place they do is just the few places they do. The inside all the people, and there are some people that didn't go, they came inside and find another rooms. So those who just left, I don't think there are more than 300 people. The news team meanwhile observed the debris left behind by the demolition squad has largely been left untouched, further complicating the insanitary conditions. Despite the insanitary conditions, food vendors were seen busy preparing meals which would eventually be sold to the public. It's been more than a month since the AMA carried out a demolition exercise, in fact a massive one here at Old Fadama. The exercise was intended to dredge the Kole Lagoon. Now several weeks on, the place is already bustling with activity. So I ask, is Sodom and Gomorrah rising or is it the case of city authorities being caught taking a little nap? Ridwan Karim Dini Osman, Joy News, Accra. Mm. The Dragon Law Enforcement Union of the Ghana Police Service wants the government to establish a rehabilitation center for drug addicts in the Ashanti region. The lack of such a center, the police say, is hampering efforts to evacuate drug addicts at Tinka Island, a notorious drug enclave at Alaba in Kumasi. Mahmoud Mohamed Rudin has more. Most joint accommodating some drug addicts. Some of the addicts have been in the practice for years. Some have realized the danger of selling and using drugs, but the attempts to end the practice is fruitless. I'm here. <laughs> I learned. Because many problems. My head. I'm thinking many things. I have money sometimes, but I come to smoke cocaine. Yeah. Now the cocaine, if I take arm, my man is coming down, cooling. I'm not going to disturb. I'm not going to rob anybody. If I get the cocaine smoke, my man is down. This enclave has been a safe haven for addicts, but a threat to youth in the local communities. I have grandchildren. Because of the activities of the peddlers here, I take them to work now that they are on vacation. These drug peddlers have to be evacuated. The news team turns upon this statement on one of the walls and it reads, My sensible brothers, let us simply say no to drugs now. Perhaps one of the addicts wrote the warning. The Drug and Law Enforcement Unit of the police in the region have begun a weekly exercise to evacuate the drug addicts. The exercise, which began on Wednesday, led to the destruction of structures that aided the peddling of drugs. Some looked on, while others supported the police in the exercise. We are sacking them and we are going to demolish their structures that the landlords or ladies allowed them to be perching here. In fact, I'm of the view that 
they have been permitted by the landlords and ladies of the area. How can you spend money building houses like this to allow these people to come and make it so filthy? And you're watching. But the police want a centre established to rehabilitate and reform the addicts. Though it's very difficult to get the, 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 the pushes, we have arrested a lot and put them before court. But I think they are able to sell their products because buyers are readily available. So we're coming to sack these junkies. In fact, if we are to arrest these people, the government have to build a special place to keep them. They, you could see how they, they, they are looking and they look like. Until appropriate structures are put in place to deal with this need, the addicts may just continue their old ways. The Asing Region Police Commander's Dawn arrested four armed robbers who robbed and raped commuters on the Accra and Swam Highway. The four are said to be part of a syndicate that robbed Member of Parliament for time, Chrissy Jang Tutu, some three weeks ago. ASP Yao in Ketia Yaboa is Easting Region Police PRO. Their mode of operation is they will, when they see a targeted car or truck or articulated truck, they will use a disused copper, metal, rocks to hit the back or the side so that the truck driver or the vehicle driver will assume that the vehicle is experiencing a breakdown and stop. Or at times to when vehicle stops and the passengers get down to units at the secluded areas of the Accra Kumasi Highway within the Insawam communities and yeah, within Insawam and and communities surrounding the Insawam area, they will pass on them and rob them. Mm. So um, this is their mode of operation. Prime Minister Dr. Kwabna Donko has assured beyond resolving the current energy crisis plaguing in the country, government is putting in place measures to ensure a majority of Ghanaians have access to electricity. Though he admits the country is currently going through a crisis as a result of the power situation, he was confident government is capable of ensuring Ghanaians get reliable, safe and secure power supply. Speaking at the commissioning of a rural electrification project at Zumbrungu near Bogatanga in the Upper East region, he said government's plan is to connect 90% of the country's population to the electricity grid. Up next, we bring you business news with Etonam Singh. <music> Business News is brought to you by... My pleasure to bring you business. My name is Eton Ramsey. The World Bank has agreed to support government's budgets with over 600 million U.S. dollars. The World Bank believes the move will help strengthen Ghana's credit ratings and make sustainable the country's debt levels. $150 million of the funds from the World Bank will support the 2015 budget. It comes with a policy-based guarantee of $400 million to cover securities issuance of up to $1 billion by government. $45 million of the fund will also support the second phase of the reform programs government is embarking on to enhance fiscal discipline, strategic allocation of resources and efficient service delivery in the public sector. The transport sector project will also receive additional funding of $25 million from the World Bank. Uh, we are supporting uh, Ghana because Ghana is entitled to that kind of support uh, from the World Bank group. But more specifically on the uh, instruments that have been chosen, as the minister has said, what we have been looking at here is a mechanism to enhance the credit worthiness of Ghana that will enable Ghana to approach capital markets and benefit from the guarantee instruments in the form of much lower, we hope, uh, interest rates. That Finance Minister said Tekwe appreciative of the gesture explains donor partners are no longer holding back their funds. The donor flows that dried up uh, have started flowing, including the World Bank 
uh, budget support, which is part of, you know, what uh, the agreements that we signed today. So if there is any doubt um, to the skeptics, I think this signing ceremony should show that the VP donor support that we have been talking about, as well as, you know, other flows, which we have said, uh, the um, second tranche, once the IMF board, you know, approves the first review staff report, uh, as well as uh, the cocoa and other flows, are real flows to the economy, and the speculation that is ongoing, and also the unfortunate talking down of the economy, uh, I would hope uh, would uh, will change. The German government is meanwhile to also support Ghana with a multi-donor budget support of 17.31 million euros and an outgrower and value chain fund of 23 million euros primarily to support local farmers. Now, the executive director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASEP, is asking government to account for the $100 million of petroleum revenues. It's claimed to have been transferred to the sinking fund. Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam says ASEP's checks with the Bank of Ghana, no transfers has been made since the establishment of the sinking fund. Speaking to journalists at an oil and gas revenue utilization forum in Accra, he has also requested for the use of the 600 and 66 million cities of the ABFA, which was to serve as counterpart funding for the CDB loan. Dr. Amin Adam maintains the money per his checks have not been disbursed. ABFA, a report issued by the government by the end of March, the reconciliation report, shows that 666 million Ghana cities being part of the ABFA was not spent. I did not see it as part of the revenues in the budget, in the revised budget. It wasn't counted as additional revenues. It wasn't spent, so where has that money gone to? It's important government tells us where it went to. If it is considered as additional revenues, again, the government deficit should have been lower and not revised upwards. In the budget, the minister says that $100 million was already transferred to the sinking fund, and the Bank of Ghana swept it. By the Bank of Ghana sweeping it, it means that the Bank of Ghana took all positive balances in government accounts to repay government indebtedness to the Bank of Ghana. But my checks at the Bank of Ghana show that since the sinking fund was established, no transfers have been made to the sinking fund. So on what basis could the Bank of Ghana sweep 100 million US dollars, supposed to go to the sinking fund from oil money? And so these are the transparency issues that I think government needs to respond to. I am happy about the publishing of the data, the revenues, the production volume, the lifting, the expenditure, but I will not be happy if we cannot get up-to-date report on what happened to the 600 million Ghana cities, which should have been spent last year, but which was not spent because the CDB, uh, China Development Bank, loan-funded projects to which this money was to be a counterpart fund was not disbursed. Now, some, some telecom companies in the country have welcomed the new mobile money guidelines, saying they will make them more competitive. The Bank of Ghana last month issued the new guidelines which empowers mobile operators to be licensed to own and manage electronic money business using retail outlets and agents. Commercial senior manager for MTN Mobile Money, Elihini, tells Joy Business his company should be ready to implement the new rules by the end of the year. Lihini spoke to Joy Business at the launch of the 2015 MTN Mobile Money Month at the Makola Market in Accra. He lauded the Bank of Ghana's new guidelines on mobile money operations in the country. Well, um, with regards to the guidelines, it's been something we've been looking forward to. Competition helps us to be better and to serve our customers better. So we welcome competition. But the most important thing is that it also now gives us MTN the flexibility to have a subsidiary that is able to on its own drive uh, the mobile money agenda. MTN has meanwhile declared August as the mobile money month and officials say there are several rewards for clients who undergo mobile money transactions.
The rewards are, are many. Uh, first of all, for our customers who use uh, the service to buy or top up airtime, we are uh, rewarding them with uh, bonus airtime. It used to be 30%. For the month of August, we've increased it to 50%, so they'll get more time to talk. Then we also are giving some goodies to our high-value customers who pay DSTV using MTN Mobile Money. MTN Mobile Money, meanwhile, enables customers to receive money from abroad instantly on their phones. The service, apart from the traditional money transfer and airtime top-up, now offers a wide range of services, including the payment of utility and DSTV bills, payment of school fees, bulk payments, among others. And on that note, we wrap up with business. My name is Eton Amse. Kwame Jumo is next with sports. Please stay. Business. The sports segment is brought to you by Mixy Milk Powder. Health is a delicious step away. Right, it's now time for sports and Kwame Jumajima is here with the details. Good evening to you, Kwame. Good evening. Now, uh, the f of course, the biggest story for, for this evening has to do with the, has to be the first uh, first capital, capital plus, plus Premier League. And uh, the biggest story, of course, it has a folks win over Liberty. And you know, most people will be wondering what will be the implications of the mm. win. Well, for any uh, Phobian fan, this is one win and three crucial points that might just see Hart survive the league. Okay. In effect, what you're saying, people are suggesting that, I mean, Hart is still wherever it is and it's mm -hmm. going down. Still 15th of the log. Yeah. But what you're also saying is that this, is, this begins the road to recovery for Accra Hearts of Folk. You couldn't have said it any better. Take it away. If you're a fan of Accra Hearts of Oak, it's a very good time to be uh, with the Phobian family, getting a very, very important result against the Liberty Professionals uh, earlier this uh, afternoon. A result that sees Accra Hearts of Oak remain where they are on the league log. They currently lie 15th, but of, of 32 points now and from a possible 78. Coach Eddie Ansa crediting that win to tactical discipline from his side. It's been a very good win for us. We came here with a game plan with our destiny in our own hands. Because when we look at the league block, our position is not too good enough. It's very bad. Our position was very bad. So we came here with a mission, a mission to get the three maximum points. And I tell you, the Lord has done it for us. The boys fought. They adhered to our game plan. Came back to the second half. We're telling our boys that they can push and we can get it at least a goal. And they did push and we got that winning goal. Well, that three uh, crucial points have gotten a lot of Phobian uh, fanatics very, very excited and looking forward to the final four match days. We understand the Phobians have uh, brought in a new technical director, Turkish Van Lee Chan, and he says he is in here to make sure that the Phobians survive the drop. We will face this challenge, and today we started to face this challenge. And as I said, we will bring our hearts of hope back to the right position in the league table. And um, we will play nice football. We showed that we can play with high fighter style, but this is not enough. Okay. The mission is to survive with hearts of Otoko in the Ghanaian League. This is my first priority. And then, but I'm sure we will survive. We go to the camp of our losing team, Liberty Professionals, who failed to garner all three points. They are deputy coach Felix Abwadi promising that the team will return to winning ways on March Day 27. We made an effort to win this game. Seriously, uh, we were into the game uh, in the first half. We have good opportunities to, uh, to take the lead, but uh, unfortunately our strikers couldn't uh, hit the target. So uh, our, our life doesn't depend on this match. We have four more games to go in. If we, when we don't get points here, I think we can go to war and get points there. 
Okay, let's get to see the results of all the games that were played on March Day 26. Now, Alia vs. Afternoon Great Olympics winning by four goals to two against Brooklyn Chelsea. Medium Sporting Club getting a result against Wafa. Between United drawing 0 0 against Ashko. Liberty losing by 0 to 1 to Hearts of Kosovo. It's now three wins in a row against uh, Wa All Stars. New Diviasa drawing 2 0 with Interlight. Heart of Lions, the biggest winners on March Day 26, scoring five goals in the process. And thus is how the league table is looking like with only four matches to go. How close is that? 45 44. Only a point separating at uh, gold from uh, Ediana Stars. Brooklyn Chelsea internalized Wa All Stars. Kumase Asante Kotoko up to Sith on the league log by the final three places that will be of interest to a lot of sporting fanatics. Olympics on 33, Hearts of Oak on 32, and that be a United at this point who are definitely candidates for relegation there at the bottom of the log. Hearts of Oak will simply have to win all their four, uh, four final games and hope that other results would go their way. Let's do some news on the transfer front now. And yesterday we brought you a story on Kevin Prince Sporting moving to Sporting Lisbon in Portugal, we now understand that the deal is off due to issues concerning image rights. Both parties could not agree on personal image rights. The 28-year-old was dropped by Schalke 04 in the Bundesliga at the end of last season following a shock defeat at Cologne and Boateng has also played for AC Milan, Borussia Dortmund. Let's do some action from uh, the Audi cap and now and as we build up to the major European leagues uh, which will commence with the Premier League later versus Sunday in the Premier League. The Audi cap is currently ongoing and let's uh, wrap up with a story on weight uh, lifting as we build up to Rio 2016 and uh, Brazil, Ghanaian weight left Alberta and Puma very, very desperate to make it to Rio next year. It's very difficult for us to qualify for the Olympics. In London 2012, I qualified as a wild card. If I have a good All-African Games, if I get a medal, then I can go to the World Championships in the US. If I do well there, who knows, I could get another wild card for Rio 2016. Well, that's it for sports. Yeah. And uh, if you're a fan of the phobians, Another win could just do. Yes, I know it's going to happen. Except, we'll that, and see. except <laughs> that just looking at the league table, it looks as if, you know, Hearts of Folk was craving for Olympics to come into the league. And it's coming to the league and it's going down with Hearts of Folk. Well, for Hearts of Folk, if you have a look at the league table again, they will probably not too, uh, be too concerned about Olympics. It's only a point. Hearts must probably just allow league to go. Well, at this point, it will be it will be very sad to see Oli go. They just only go back into the Premier League. I'm yeah. sure the other clubs in there, they would have to do a lot more going into the four uh, final round of matches to survive at the league. That's it for Sports. The news continues. The sports segment.